Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video of Architects 3DP from our new location. In this new episode, we're gonna study the ninth tab of the Cura Custom Settings menu, that is the Build Plate Addition. If you haven't watched the previous episodes yet, you can do it clicking here in the top right corner or well in the links in the description. Having a perfect build plate addition is one of the most important parts if you want to print anything in 3D. The build plate addition will play the role of sticking your object to the heated bed for 30 minutes, 30 hours or whatever your print takes to finish. In this video I'm gonna teach you how to properly configure your build plate addition setting to get the best possible result with your prints. But before starting, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel clicking here in this little icon in the bottom right corner of the video. If you do it, you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna import an STL file in Cura, and this time it's going to be the 3D Benchy, a nice and small model created by Creative Tools that you will find linked down in the description of the video. So we'll drop it into the canvas and change the interface view from solid view to layer view. If you want, you can set the initial basic config similar to the one we are using, having a layer height of 0.2 mm a grid infill with a 20%, a printing speed of 60mm per second, the cooling activated at layer 3, and the generic support option disabled. Once you're ready to go, we're gonna go down to the very first layer of the print, and we're gonna see that by default the build plate addition type is set to skirt. But as always, we have more options to go with, and in this case they are four. The first option we can select is known. I don't recommend you to use this option, since this step will prime our nozzle whatever the option you use before starting the print, and it's very recommended to do. We're gonna jump back to the skirt options, and we're gonna click as always in the setup wheel to check out what options are available to activate in the settings visibility menu. Alright, so the first option is not compatible with our machines, since it's only compatible with dual extruder machines, so we're gonna skip it as well as the next two options. Then we have build plate addition type, the option that was enabled by default, and we're gonna keep it. The next option, build plate addition extruder, one more time is only valid for printer with more than one extruder, so we're gonna skip it one more time, and then we'll find skirt line count. I'm gonna activate this value and explain what it does. So select it, close, and now you will be able to see it in your custom settings menu. By the way, you will only see this setting if you have selected skirt as the building plate addition type. Alright, so we are gonna increase this value and we are gonna see that it controls the number of lines that will compose the brim. If we set it to 10, we'll see how it increases as well as 20, etc. But if we set it to 1, we'll see that it does not work and it's because this value is overwritten by other option that we're gonna analyze now. So we'll click again in the setup wheel and we're gonna activate the two options square distance and square brim minimum length. Square distance option will measure the distance in between the skirt and the actual model. I used to set it around three millimeters since it's not too close to the model so probably won't have problems with rest of filaments during movements, but it's not too far from the model so the printing area won't be reduced. If we set it for example to 40mm, it will work perfectly, but we can see how the printing area has been reduced considerably. The skirt distance will also affect to the printing area, so a high value will make it impossible to print a quite big object. So as I said before, I'm gonna set it to 3mm, and as you can see, the build plate distance that has been reduced is insignificant. The next option, skirt brim minimum length, that is set to 500mm, is the one that was blocking our skirt line count option to go lower than 4 lines. This option overrides the first one, and if now we set it for example to 50mm, we will see that now the line count is working properly, having only one line for the skirt. Now if we set it to 2, 3, 4, it will work as well. The skirt is my favorite type of bed addition and the one that I use the most, especially if I'm gonna print small and not very tall objects that will finish in one or two hours. And the reason that I like it is because it takes almost no time to get printed, works perfectly to prime the extruder and uses almost no material. For 10 hour prints and so on, I used to use the brim option that we're gonna analyze later, but to finish with the skirt, I'm gonna set the line count to 3 
the skirt distance to 3 mm and the minimum length to 50 mm. And I'm gonna continue with the next build plate adhesion type that is the brim. The brim, as you can see, is not separated from the actual object that is going to be printed. This type provides better adhesion if you are suffering wrapping, what is very common with filaments such as ABS or similar, but will also add post processing step in your workflow since you normally have to remove the brim from the object manually with a cutter and sometimes this part can be very tricky. This method does not take much material and time as well and is quite reliable for brick prints but we have to have into account the manual post-processing of the parts. Now we're gonna jump into the settings visibility menu clicking in the setup wheel to check what options can we show to modify the build plate adhesion type. We're gonna activate brim width with its sub options brim line count and brim only on outside. Back into the Cura Custom Settings menu, we can now modify the values we just activated. The first option of the minimum length is common with the skirt and does the same. The brim width in millimeters will control how wide the brim is. And I used to set it depending on the size of the model and how tall it is. For example, to print Benchy, in case I would like to print it with a brim, I would not choose more than 3 millimeters since it's more than enough. But for example, if you want to print a columnar pillar such as this one, I will use a brim of around 8 to 10 millimeters minimum since it's very tall and thin and the movements of the y-axis when the top is being printed could break the bed adhesion if it is not stiff enough. Back with our 3D Benchy we are gonna check that the brim line count is gonna change with the brim width. So we can control the width with the total number of lines instead of millimeters. We're gonna see for example since we are using a 0.4 millimeters nozzle if we choose a brim width of 4 millimeters, it will use 10 lines, since if we multiply 0.4 by 10, it's 4 millimeters. Remember that I used to use almost in every small print the skirt. So when I decide to use a brim, it's because the object is gonna be very tall or big and it's gonna have a big brim. So we're gonna set the brim width to 5 millimeters, that is the minimum I will use, and we're gonna check what the last option actually does. Brim only on the outside will make the brim only activated in the external perimeter of our objects. To see the example, I'm gonna scale up the 3 d Benji to 300% and see what happens. Being the option activated, we can see that the brim, shown in blue in the screen, only appears on the external shell of the object. Now if we disactivate it, we can see that the brim appears as well in the middle of the letters, what will be very difficult to remove since they are quite small. I always use it only on the outside, since it's in the outside where the wrapping problems used to appear. So I'm gonna activate it and even hide it from the menu as well as the brim line count since I don't use it. Last but not least, we have raft build plate addition type. Maybe this is the most effective of all of them, but it's the one that I don't use to select that much since it makes the prints considerably longer and utilizes a lot of material to be made. If we compare it with the skirt, to print the 3D Brinchy, the skirt will take 1 hour and 14 minutes, and if we use the raft, it will take 1 hour and 27 minutes. The difference is not that big since it's a very small print, but it could increase the printing time of big objects in several hours, even though it's the most reliable and effective method to get high quality prints out of the bed. To analyze it, we're gonna jump into the settings visibility menu and activate the first group of options that will be raft extra margin, raft smoothing, raft air gap, and an initial layer Z overlap. The first of the options, raft extra margin, will control the extension of the raft over the end of the printed object. By default it's set to 15, but we're gonna reduce it to 5 mm. But if we reduce it to 5 mm, we will see how it gets smaller. This setting, as before, will reduce the printing surface, reducing the same value from the border of the bed. If we increase it to 40, we'll see how small is the printing surface now. To continue, we're gonna set it to 1 cm or 10 mm and analyze the next options. We're gonna let raft smoothing at 5 mm, what is a good value. And next we have raft air gap, what controls the distance between the top layer of the raft and the bottom layer of the object. We're gonna set it to 0.15 mm and we're gonna continue with the initial layer Z overlap. This value controls the overlapping between the first and the second layer of the printed object, patterning them very well, so later it's easy to separate it from the raft. By default it's set to the 50% of the air gap, what is correct and we're gonna keep it like that. Before starting with the next options of the settings visibility menu, I'm gonna try to quickly explain you the different parts of a raft so it will be easier to understand. In this graphic from the Ultimaker website, we can see the three parts of the raft plus the final object. 
In dark blue we find the object and right below we have in orange the top layers of the raft. Next in green we have the raft middle layer and finally in the bottom, marked in pink, we have the raft base layer. Once we know that we are gonna jump into the settings visibility menu and continue activating options. We're gonna start activating the four options available for the top layers of the raft. The first one will be raft top layers and we'll count the number of horizontal top layers of the raft that will create the horizontal plane surface where our model will stick to. By default it's set to 2 and if we move our layer analyzer we can check that the layers 3 and 4 will be the top layer of the raft. The next option, raft top layer thickness, will control the thickness of these layers independently of the layer thickness we set for the model in the quality tab. Next, raft top line width will control the amount of filament extruded through our 0.4mm nozzle that will give us the possibility to make wider lines and by default it's set to your nozzle size. Finally, the raft top spacing will control the space between two consecutive lines of the top layers of the raft. Since I don't use the raft mode very often, when I use it, I utilize the settings that are set by default and it worked for me. Now we're gonna jump back into the settings visibility menu and we're gonna continue activating all the options dedicated to the middle and base layers of the raft. And we're gonna start with the analysis. The first option is raft middle thickness, but we'll control one more time the thickness of the horizontal layers that will form the middle layers of the raft, independently of all other adjustments. The default is bigger than the standard one, providing a better addition. Then we find raft middle line width, that by default is set to two times the size of the nozzle, and we're gonna keep it like that, and next raft middle spacing that one more time is oversized, this time being 1mm. These middle layers of the raft are the transition in between the base layers, more fat to stick better, and the top layers, perfectly calibrated to get the best attention for the model. The raft base thickness will control one more time the independent thickness of every first layer of the raft, but this time is set to 0.24mm, slightly higher value than the first layer, to provide a better attention. And next we'll find raft base line width, that is set to two times the size of the nozzle and we're gonna keep like that. And finally, raft line spacing that it's set to four times the size of the nozzle and we're gonna keep it as well. More or less, these options are all the basics that we will change for a raft. But if we go to the settings visibility menu, clicking on the setup wheel, we can see that there are lots of extra options for the raft. We are not going to analyze them one by one since we have analyzed these options in the respective dedicated episodes that I'm gonna link down in the description. But basically they are specific configurations that will be used for the rafts independently from the adjustments we have made to our object. If we don't activate them, it will use the ones we set before in the other tabs. Having an overview to these settings, we can see that we will be able to manually control the printing speed, acceleration, jerk and fan speed for printing the raft. The raft print speed has the sub-options to control separately the top, middle and base print speeds. The raft print acceleration and all its sub-options will allow you to set up the acceleration for each independent top, middle and base layer of the raft. The last one, the raft print jerk, will allow you to independently control the jerk for all three parts of the raft. You can learn how to set up these specific options in the speed tab episode we created a while ago. And you can visit clicking here in the top right corner or in the link in the description. Finally, we will be able to control the fan speed one more time for the top, middle and base layers of the raft. We are not going to analyze this option in this video, but you can check out the cooling tab episode in our YouTube channel where you will learn to set up these adjustments for your raft. You can watch this episode as well clicking in the top right corner or in the link in the description. And this was the last adjustment to analyze for the build plate addition episode. Now we are going to print the 3D Benji three times, scale down to 50% of the original size to compare all the types of bed addition and the quality of the bottom surfaces.
As you can see, the skirt worked just perfectly in this small print. The brim worked out perfectly as well, having the extra step of removing the brim with a cutter. And the raft worked out perfectly as well, being very easy to remove the final object from the actual raft, but taking a bit longer to finish. If we compare the bottom finishes, we can see that the last option with the raft has a quite better finish, but overall all of them are very good. For the next episode, we're gonna skip the next two tabs in the settings visibility menu, the dual extrusion tab since we don't have a dual extrusion machine, and we're going to skip as well the mesh fixes tab, since it's a tab that I don't recommend to use, because it's better to fix your 3D models in a 3D modeling software. In the next episode, on Wednesday 11th, we're gonna study a very cool tab in the Curia Custom Settings menu, the Special Modes tab. Now stay tuned for the new content in the upcoming weeks, hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking here in this little icon. You can also follow us on social networks at Architects3DP to get the latest news, and please consider supporting my work on Patreon to keep making this channel possible. Besides helping us and making us super happy, you will also get nice rewards that you can check in our Patreons page, navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you in the next video.